Hey, look at the new eyebrows. <laughs> this is a Vange 400. So this machine's in disarray right now because uh, so I quit one job and I had to be at another place but I left my truck in sight so I had to be get there at uh, 3 or 4 o'clock, pick this thing up, drive an hour to get back here, load up with stuff and then be at a new company at 6 in the morning today and do three well tests so the whole truck is a mess. Anyways this is a Vanish 400 and uh, this is the, uh, the welding truck right here. And the uh, uh, job test went well. This thing has a Lincoln Ranger, 305 Jeep. This thing is a 1942, 1942, like an SA200. It's a Junior Shield Arc. Go start with a hand crank. So you start with a hand crank here. Just grab it and you yank up and click the magneto. Let's see, here's here. Maybe these RPMs when you adjust the welding current, pull it out and turn it. You know, you want to you adjust the, uh, you know, the idle speed of the engine here. This is the choke right here. So this is a 42. This is 1947. I got this thing from uh, eBay, from Holden, Missouri. It's a junior. Sh no, no, no. It's an Ampere Special. Nineteen forty-seven. That thing right there under the uh, hood here. This is. You used to have an SA200 to blackface uh, from the 70s. Uh, this is a F163 and a red cell engine. But uh, this is a 1943, no, yes, no, 1946 Lincoln SA300 generator. Uh, this is one of my 46 SA300s. And, um, you know, I just took it to the machine shop, got a couple of new bolts, uh, you know, done up on it here. But, uh, um, I made this engine to this, but the engine, you know, it needs work and, you know, it just, it just doesn't weld here, basically. Probably shine coils or something. Probably needs, uh, you know, flasher fields or something. This is a 1951 Lincoln SC200 Shore Hood F162 engine. This is a 1956 Lincoln Shore Hood. This one's another 1956 Lincoln Shore Hood. This is a 1969 Lincoln Red Face. This one's a 1961 Lincoln Red Face with a uh, F1, no, no, TM27 engine. It's not the original engine. This one's a 1958 Lincoln uh, SA200 transition model. This is a 1940. Three. So this is my original SA400, and then the engine went, and I have the engine, and this is a new engine. I paid two thousand dollars for this engine, and I put this engine and I made it to the generator, and this is the one that uh, I had pictures and videos of where I had the 471 Detroit, but this is the 271. Uh, this is a 77 block 271, but uh, see, I, sh I shortened it. Use that for the uh, original one. You just have a big old bath air filter right here. The fuel tank used to be right here, but now on this engine, you know, it must have been a rail car, or whatever, whatever application this used to be. So if you, oil bath air filters right here. So it's everything's moved over. I've been able to shorten it, make the SA400 the same length. Ooh, trippy. Same length as uh, an SA200. This is my other SA400. This is a 1974 model with another 271 Detroit. This one's a 1946 
Lincoln SA 300 with the Hercules GXD engine. Let's see if I can get over here. Uh, yes, Hercules GXD engine. I actually made these headers. Uh, I didn't want to. I did. I. I. Yeah, I just didn't want to. But uh, the original ones were, uh, the real cast iron was all cracked. It was just a disaster. You know, it's funny because uh, this and this are together. Uh, exhaust runs through here. The fuel, I believe, whatever runs through here. Even though this and this is welded together, when this thing's running, this is ice cold. I can put my hand on it, it's ice cold, and this is scorching hot. I thought that was kind of cool. And this I need to take the skid steer and uh, you know see it's kind of kind of fallen here. But this is 1940, no, 1960 three-phase motor generator, electrical. But the thing is you gotta get it up to speed. You just these three-phase units, these ones that plug into uh, three-phase power or single phase power, all you gotta do is you gotta spin them up to speed and then create welding current. But uh, you know this is uh, this is a sketchy design. I just want to see if I could do it before I, I you um, you know before I went full out on it and did it professionally. But I just kind of just you know just kind of put it together just to see if it would work and it does work. But um, then I realized you know it's kind of pointless to have this thing and this thing going because it's just too much money to try and you know change filters and fuel and everything and just get this thing going and it's just a waste of time and a waste of money. So I just stopped. But this is a 470 Detroit diesel. Engine alone weighs 2,300 pounds. And it's kind of falling over here. And I gotta take the skid steer and uh, push this thing back up. And I do have another welding machine. Let's see here. This is about $600 worth of wood right here. You see, I, you know, it's up, it's off the grass, but it's. So it just rains like crazy, so there's tons of grass growing everywhere here. So I gotta, I gotta remove this grass, do something with it. Take Roundup. This is 1946 Lincoln SA200 short hood. This one starts with a hand crank and has a dog chain. Let's see here, you know, it's the dog chain on here. Go down to there. Hand crank start. And this is the original setting for my uh, SA300 from the 40s. You see, I, I had two of these machines and I pulled the one apart because the Hercules engine was shot. Uh, but uh, you see, I still have all the parts kicking around here. Uh, everything's on wood right now. and I. But uh, so I gotta do something with this. I'm always worried about uh, rain or something or it's gonna rust something or something here, you know? I just moved this here the other day, so I gotta, I gotta move everything here. All right, now this unit here, this is a, a Dynasty 200. Uh, well, it's a Dynasty 200. There's no much more I can say about it. But, um, yeah. All right, now this machine right here, this is a Dynasty 350. Uh, the 200, uh, the 350, I've, I use it more for welding aluminum, uh, titanium. Uh, GRB College of Welding has the 350. Uh, that's the reason why I went up and I, I went uh, uh, 2012 and 2012. Uh, I upgraded my equipment. I had the I had the Dynasty 200. I had the old SA 200s, SA 300s, 400s, SA 300, 2013 SA model, uh, and I had a whole bunch of those machines. And I spent about twenty two thousand dollars. Bought a Vanish 400. Bought this machine right here, um, twenty thousand dollars, and I upgraded all my equipment. And basically, uh, you know, the, this machine is basically for larger jobs. You know, thicker aluminum, uh, titanium. Um, you know, like I, I can bring quarter inch. I've, I've, I've uh, you know, sometimes I get jobs in, in, a, in a pipe fabrication shop as a rig welder, but uh, in a pipe fabrication shop, and I'll bring my own machine here. Um, sometimes I'll bring, I'll bring this machine, depending on where I'm going, but I'll bring this machine. Sometimes I'll leave it, sometimes I won't. Uh, this machine's more for TIG welding. It's better for TIG welding. It, it, it's great for stick welding and everything. Um, 
But if you're going to be stick welding, I always get this question asked quite a lot, uh, you know, should I buy an XMT or should I buy a Dynasty? Um, if you're going to be stick welding, buy the XMT. The XMT is a much, much better welding machine for, for stick welding. Uh, you see in all the pipe fabrication shops, uh, special pipe fabrication shops I worked at in the past. Uh, this one's a Dynasty 350, but uh, this is more for TIG welding and can stick weld. Uh, but those XMPs are, they, you know, they're very difficult to beat, especially with the inductance force and just how much adjustability they have. So, um, yeah. A little bit dark in here. Uh, this is a Lincoln uh, 216 uh, Power MIG. Uh, I bought this uh, five years ago, maybe. And um, the only reason why I bought it is because, you know, for, for practicing pipe welding coupons, uh, I found it more convenient just to, uh, you know, if I was doing with maybe a TIG route or a stick route, it was just a lot more convenient to, uh, to have MIG, like attack with MIG, you know, so I went out and bought a MIG welding machine, you know, just kind of to, uh, kind of to, uh, you know, help me practice basically. So it's a little bit more convenient for tacking. This is a Blaris 250. Use this thing for cutting grass. This is a diesel engine. This is a 19, oh, that was an 81 Blaris. This is my uh, 49 8N Ford. So it used to be with my grandfather's, but uh, uh, he passed away and I uh, acquired it. Uh, it was just sitting in a, in, in a bush. And I kind of wanted to cut grass, you know, so. So that's why I had this, and I bought this thing. And I have uh, a lot of grass to cut. A yeah, nice little tractor. This is a gasoline engine. That's a diesel engine. And that's a diesel engine. 250.